everyone to know about it, he wants to pull this off in one hit, you've told no one, it's all in your mind. Right. Fucking. This is the fucking dream, you fucking Jaguars, mate. We're here to do a rap song. Take two. So, we're putting together a website. The website is <coughs> nearly built. The website is going to sell merchandise, sell merchandise for Dreaming Jaguars, along with other um, products from our guests, books, etc. Um, from the likes of Mr. RN Voot and hopefully the other guys that we've interviewed. And it's just going to enable us to to add a higher production value to to the channel because we need to be putting out more videos um, and this you know this stuff doesn't pay for itself so we've got to try and allocate a bit of money to our time then we can do more that's basically the size of it isn't it um, and then and we want to try and create some sort of I suppose some sort of bridge between us and the sort of academic top of the food chain guys that we're interviewing and then the sort of hardy everyday psychonauts and maybe because we aren't scientists and we aren't you know people that are experts in this field other than experts in our own experiences that maybe this this community we can kind of create some sort of bridge and that's kind of what we're trying to do with the channel so we're going to sell t-shirts, we're going to sell hoodies, we're going to sell um, caps, okay. we're going to sell products from other people's websites, we're going to set up a Patreon as well, so that, like I said, if we're taking days off of our normal work to do filming or we've got to travel, those costs are covered by that small income from the website. So that's what's happening, it's going to be amazing, the website looks amazing. Um, and hopefully it will be able to create, like I said, some sort of interactive bridge within this community and trying to spread this message wider. That's well, what we're doing. That's what that was that's our what idea. Doing. That was the original idea, wasn't it? Yeah. When we first started this. Yeah. To bring. Uh, bring together. No, a layman. Well, view. this is the thing, isn't it? Because we are laymen. But we are experienced psychonauts, and maybe we can act as that voice for the experienced, or for the psychonauts, anyone actually, anybody in, in, in barking on this endeavour of self-mind cosmos. Mm. That's, that's, the, that's the aim, isn't it? That's the aim, That's yeah. the aim. The aim is that, exactly. So that's what we're doing. Conversation mate, it's a conversation, a little video that we put together off the back of this video, the video, video. Combo. Combo. So, let's have a little combo. The get your mind in gear because it's early again, isn't it? It's, it's early. Mm. Little combo. So, so the breakthrough psychedelic experience breakthrough, the breakthrough psychedelic experience, not the threshold, the breakthrough psychedelic experience, the loss of everything that is you into the system, right? Do you think there's a possibility that the intricacy of the fucking 8K resolution hallucinations right mm -hmm. then were you when you're overwhelmed by that oh my god what the hell is that in front of me yeah do you think that's just a normal part of nature do you think that's just just because we're so plugged into this physical I don't know but when you were describing that I was thinking of that movie Ant-Man when he fucking makes himself so small that he becomes 
um, quantum. Microbial. Quantum. Yeah. And he's in the quantum realm. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if just if you did do that and you shrunk to the quantum realm, that's you could and all that stuff just going on around you. Yeah. Waveforms turning into particles. Yeah, yeah, I think there's definitely I think there's definitely something in the geometry. There's a study going on oh, at the moment. Sacred geometry, man. There's a study going on at the moment, or or, or it has been a study. I've watched a video of these guys in New York. This uh, I think it might be Harvard University right. are doing a study on the geometry, mapping the geometry of the DMT space. Oh right, okay. And um, and they. Are they John, uh, what are the mathematicians, weren't they? They are but mathematicians. Yeah. They are coming up with a mathematical formula of, of geometry, the geometry of the DMT space. And then you kind of like, you look at stuff on a, on that sort of macro level, like photos of water droplets and snow drops and whatever. You know when they're blown up and snowflakes, yeah. snowflakes, no, yeah, snowflakes. Sorry, you look at that geometry and you think, right? Oh, the geometry be, of a so snowflake is mental, isn't it? Wouldn't it be just so simple if the DMT space was just you observing the quantum realm? <laughs> well, that, how would that explain? Oh, I suppose you know, if there's no such thing as time and space, then. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, does it? So there well, could be entities that just live in the quantum well, realm. Well, so in the Bhagavad Gita, right, I'm sure Shiva says to Krishna, or one or the, one way around or the other, that you have to make yourself so small That's right, yeah. that fire can't burn you yeah. and water that water can't, can't drown, can't drown yeah. you. Just move in between the and then particles there it, of hydrogen. Yeah. And then oxygen. there is a theory, there is a theory, isn't there? That I'm swimming in oxygen. There's a theory that civilizations would, would naturally shrink themselves the more technologically advanced they got, Matt they would make themselves infinitely small so that, that they wouldn't be affected by by the by yeah. the physical I'm not, okay yeah the I'm macro not, my head just I, you, to get your head around that is quite a difficult task isn't it yeah because i'm like well if you're in the quantum realm surely there's still things that can actually affect you maybe but physics yawny, don't yawny. excuse me physics aren't going to apply at that level are they well then you become quantum don't you it becomes the quantum uh, probability yeah, you just become. But then, but then, how the fuck would we know? Because we can't, we don't, we can't even. You know, we barely understand. We don't understand the mechanisms of quantum physics per se. We und or we under we understand the calculations mm. that quantum physics <laughs> adhere to. So, science and scientists in general, from my understanding don't have to know how quantum mechanics works they just have to trust that the equations from quantum mechanics work so every time you use a quantum equation the 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 the, the result in the real physical world gives you the right result no that's half the problem isn't it what what what, what you do in the whatever mathematical equations what they use to describe this reality mm -hmm. When you take it to the very small, they're different. No, 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 no. They use the quantum. They use the quantum equations to work out what goes on in this in this physical reality. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't think and they, they no, that's true. Well, any any scientists out there that care to comment? I'm sure. I'm sure that's the case. I'm sure scientists are told you don't need to understand the nature of reality. You just need to know. That the equations work, mm. and therefore that's why mm. there's a lack of tr education in trying to understand the nature of reality. And only a very few fringe quantum physicists are doing that work because there's no goal. There's no. There's no. You know. There's no. 
you know, loot at the end of the tunnel. No with financial that. gain. No, it's it's just a question. <coughs> so going back to the DMT, the breakthrough psychedelic experience. Then, so when you break through, let's let's try and let's try and word that. Let's try and fucking word that, mate. So you 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 ingest your molecule. You sit back, bump the the, the geometrics take over and then you kind of there's there's like this um, slippery area where you move from observing it to actually being a part of it and in it in it and then the portals open up and the entities come forward and in all their blazing glory and allow you to slip through into those realms of leaving behind everything that's you and ruining your fucking life because all you want to do is search for the answers from that moment forwards. I don't know if that's what it does. Yeah. Not everyone does that. Yeah. What are you trying to achieve with this? What are we trying to talk about again? Uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to just put some sort of... I don't know, we're having a conversation, mate, aren't we? There's no end to the conversation. The conversation is open-ended. That tiny piece of corn there. Yeah. Just within the molecules and atoms. So that must have an atomic weight, surely. Of course it has. Is there enough? E each atom in that. That's probably a, a trillion atoms in there. Just in that, a trillion atoms. <laughs> There's a lot of atoms. A lot. How many atoms in a How piece of corn? How many atoms in a piece of corn? Answers on a that's, postcard. That's interesting, isn't it? Definitely. So how many universes could be just situations like that? Wasn't you could have just created a quasar, mate, in, the, in their universe. Oh, yeah, I'm about to destroy it. Yeah. Whatever's living in there. Yeah. That's a scary thought, isn't it? Yeah. And also, you know... That you makes know. my bread. <coughs> What you've got to think about is that within there is an entire ecosystem, I'm guessing, of bacteria that have no concept of us. Yeah? Well, there's another question because I don't even know that. Is there actually bacteria in there now? Got to be, on the surface of it. It's not like human flesh, mammal, creature, animal, we're all made up of an ecosystem, is it? Got to be. It's got to be. It's something that's grown. But it's like you say, right? So say, say for argument's sake, you do pick up that bit of corn, yeah? Pick up this bit of corn, right? Bit of corn there, and you and you hold that piece of corn. What's in that? Gluten. You hold that piece of corn there, and everything on that and in it, there's no <coughs> concept apart from they just felt a massive gravitational rush. No, not if they're in the quantum, they didn't. Well, what I'm saying is that. <coughs> The whole thing's fractal, isn't it? What do you reckon? Fucking, it's weird, isn't it? When you think simulation, going into the DMT realm, and I've just pulled a bit of corn off there, stuck it in my mouth and bitten it. Yeah. To me, that's... I've just literally pulled a bit of corn off. Yeah. Yeah. In a cornfield. Yeah. In at fucking five o'clock in the morning. Because Paul won't do a late evening film. <laughs> And oh, eating no. it, just oh, took no. a bite out of it. That's my reality right now. Yeah. We're rambling. We are rambling a little bit, but it's all right. It's good. People like the people, viewers like the rambles, don't they? And um, that could be a simulation. Yeah. All of this now. Yeah. It's a mind blower, isn't it? That's boggling, man. It's a mind blower. Well. The DMT breakthrough. The breakthrough. What would that even mean as well? There's always that you pass. You, know, you pass the geometry. Yeah. You go pass or you literally, I mean we've done it enough that there ain't no geometry, you just bang straight into this place. Yeah, the more <coughs> to be fair, we haven't we haven't we haven't partaked for quite some time since the telepathy experiment, but 
yeah, you, you, the more often you have these experiences, you kind of, which in itself is bizarre, isn't it? So you kind of, <coughs> you, you don't get to see the chrysanthemum because that doesn't form, because you just woof straight through into the space. Maybe that's the device as well. Into the space, it's, it's uh, yeah. the delivery mechanism. Doesn't no. allow for any fuck ups, does it? No, no, no. I think, I think Sorry, when, you first, when you first when you first start using the molecule, you have the chrysanthemum, and you have to you have to you break through the chrysanthemum. Maybe that is a mechanism <coughs> where, where the the con where your consciousness is rearranging itself within that sort of quantum level which is the geometry to enable it to move through into another dimension but then the more adept you are and the more frequently you have the experience you just seem to as you go back you're straight through you're already in the dimension the dimension is there playing itself playing itself out what i found interesting actually watching that um shane moss uh, video that I posted to you last night, mm. where he said he was sat in a, like a 1950s kitchen on a table when his dad was having a go at him. He didn't know. It was no, he, did, he didn't know it was him. He said he could only guess that. He could, yeah, he was watching. He was viewing a little boy sat at the <coughs> his father telling him, and all of a sudden just he went just like went that, didn't he? and then the whole walls dropped, fell away, and he and he was in a movie set, a bit like a Truman Show sort of style. Mm. Like that, that sort of stuff. I've had experiences where I've, I've said to you, I've been sat at a kitchen table and the blue-skinned lady, the sort of that maternal entity that is frequent in my experiences, was at a sink making a cake, cooking or doing something, washing up. And I was sat at a table as a little boy and she was like, and then she came over and gave me some information of some sort. I seem to remember you telling me that story. So it's like, is are these experiences... Um, Linked? No. I, I, see, I keep going back to this thought process and it, keep, and it pops into my mind once we start getting into these things and your mind starts to open up a little bit, yeah? And we think... What is the experience? What this is what happened when I had this experience, and this is this is the geometry. And then, like you said, you pass through these levels. But I think that the whole, our whole outlook on perception, right, is wrong. Like I think we're looking at we we look at perce the perception of an experience because we're not advanced enough yet, and we haven't. You know, we don't have another 200, 300, 500 thousand years worth of technology and, and information building and progress that we're looking at a bit like in the film Contact, where, where they get the pages of uh, information right from the, from the uh, pulse in space. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. And they get the information, and they've just got hundreds of millions of pages, and they're like, This is going to take us. 50 years just to go through the pages yeah and then they realize that on the bottom corner of each page is a little primer and when you put that together the pages become three-dimensional right and then all the what the edges of the information meet and then you can read all of that information but but they have why would it come through on a bit of a4 paper what i'm saying this doesn't come through on a bit of a4 paper <laughs> you're getting the point the point I'm saying is that we look at perception. How did they send that paper? From, we look at perception from from specific viewpoints, right? The galaxy. But I think we're looking at it wrong. And I don't ask me and tell. I have no idea what the right way to look at it is. But I think we look at perception wrong. Like we look at, you know what I'm saying? It's like you have these levels, and you think, is it? Is it? Is part of it in my mind? Is it in my mind, or is it out there? Right, but it's both. I think it's an amalgamation of it, of all of those angles. Well, the problem is, is we relate everything we see to what we see now. 
where yeah. we see now. And even Andrew Gannimore said that our brain will construct stuff to some format of something. So you see a blue per or a purple gypsy woman or a woman, right? Blue skin lady. That could be, couldn't. It could be fuck all feminine. It could be nothing not. feminine at all. It's not. It's definitely feminine. Well, it's maybe returned. maybe the, the, the yin and yang of male and female is something universal. I don't know. That's but, what I'm saying to you. So maybe but what I'm saying is, is your perception of it being a blue or that. No, but what you're saying is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know what I'm talking about. No, listen. Gallimore said that we will construct in yeah. our brain yeah, from so from what we otherwise. We, Otherwise, we would just be there like that. Uh, yeah. So, so if you're, so his, because you, so his theory is, if you're, if you were in contact with an alien intelligence, a, a real alien intelligence, it would be so alien, it's so alien to you that you would, your your mind, your brain, yeah, you're right. Your brain would, your brain wants to create something familiar, so it wraps familiarity around, around what you see. So, what yeah. I mean, you could be in the space, and right when you're there, then. You could be viewing this thing, but it doesn't really matter when you're in there because that space is giving you, feeding you that information. But then when you come out, the more and more you try and make sense of it, the more and more you talk about it, the more it turns from this female entity that's, you know, whatever colour. And then when it comes out, the only way you can describe that colour is blue or purple. Yeah. It was neither. Yeah. And it's female, all right? It might have been a female. Yeah, no, no, but I've no. Not, nah, you've got off with it and snogged that thing. No, I've snogged it, there. mate. No, it's not my, it's not my DMT bird. <laughs> but I have got, I have got, I have got images in my mind of the f the many, many faces of said blue skin lady, and I've got, and I've got snippets of f little photographs, because that's kind of all you bring back from it is photographs of the. <laughs> snapshot screenshots like you screenshotted that reality and that has been imprinted on your brain yeah and i've got i've got <coughs> an image of the blue skin lady with with like uh diamond almond eyes diamond color almond eyes <coughs> third eye and then loads of diamond encrusted all around the hairline and on the palm of the hand neon hieroglyphs so as the hand comes out, like as she reaches out, there's just, I remember looking at the palm of her hand and it just being full, blue skin, but full of neon symbols, all imprinted in the skin. It's fucking awesome. It is awesome. A bit like the geometry of our fingerprints and skin. Yeah, fractals. but just in a just sort of alien, godlike. So what is it? What is it all? What is it all? No one knows, we're none the wiser. Doro? Well, no, none the do wiser. I? None the wiser, never going to be. Never going to be. Somebody needs to get sort it out. Somebody with a little bit of intelligence at least. Yeah. Can't Dave, can't Andrew, can't Anthony. Get on the old, uh, get on the old. Come um, on, I want some answers. On the extended state. That's what we need, extended state. Yeah. Interesting ramble, it's good fun. This is what we're doing. We're just exploring, throwing it out there and from a sort of artistic idiot perspective um, with the experiences that we've had. And uh, we're gonna we are looking to put together a real smooth cinematic piece in an upcoming video similar to our biggest ex our, our biggest um, you know, most viewed video on the channel is our video describing the DMT breakthrough. Um, and we're going to do another one of those, but we're going to take that to a different level. That's going to be a real smart, sort of slick, simulated DMT experience. So watch out for that one. And we'll see y'all soon.